How are we doing, Husker Nation? Welcome to Thursday. We made it. Game preview time for Colorado, okay? Uh, big game this week. Much bigger than, than UTEP, although that was big in its own way. Had to start the season 1-0, in my opinion. Very handily took care of business. Good stuff. So, we're going to preview Colorado in this video here today, and I'm going to give you a prediction here at the end what I think the final score might be. Okay, um, if you haven't already, let's get this out of the way. Press like, press subscribe. Let's knock those two things out right now. Helps me out. All right, let's dive into it. Guys, the last time we beat Colorado, 14 years ago, 2010. We beat them 45-17. Uh, that's the last time we beat Colorado. We've played them three times since then. Three times. We played them um, twice under under Scott Frost, both lost in heartbreaking fashions, both against teams that we had no reason to lose to. I mean, we had superior talent against both those teams. Um, we were just outcoached. I hate to say it because I love Scott Frost, but we were outcoached in those two we lost under Scott Frost. Last year going into that game, I, I couldn't fault Rule, right? You know, they... The transfer portal overhaul that Matt Rule or that uh, Deion Sanders did at Colorado, I knew was going to be tough. They brought in a lot of talent right away that uh, he had at Jackson State. And, you know, I watched that, that our week one matchup. I think it was a Thursday night against Minnesota. The turnover issues. We saw who Jeff Sims was probably going to be for us. We had the injuries early, and I said, oh, my goodness. Then I, I turned tuned in Saturday, Colorado TCU, and I just had no hope. I hate to admit it, but I was like, "That's that Colorado team is going to beat us. And they did. All right, so this is a different year. This is year two under Matt Rule. He's got our guys. We have a freshman quarterback, but he's a five-star who doesn't play like a freshman. Um who is, is the best quarterback I've seen behind center for Nebraska um, in my lifetime, for sure. At least if we're taking one game uh, in a spring game as, as proof of anything. Very impressive debate for him. Look, we've got the talent at quarterback, at receiver. The running back by rotation thing, that's going to continue. We'll hit on that in a minute. Um, but we've got the talent on offense. The defense, you know, looks just as sharp as they did last year we gave up the one chunk play against utep i get it those things are going to happen um that was that was a dime when you re go back and rewatch it um that was really just a really good play on their part uh, but we limited them to seven points that entire rest of the game now we lost all last three of our last matchups colorado though guys we've got to win this okay that's number one heated rivalry We've lost three in a row to them. We haven't beat them since 2010. We've got to win it. Number two, we haven't started the season 2-0. We have not started a season 2-0, guys, since 2016. That also happens, coincidentally, to be the last time that we made a bowl game. So, you have that, right? So, we've got to start 2-0. We've got to get over this. I mean, just imagine it, okay? We beat a rival we haven't been able to beat in three plus years, and it's it's a cultural a clash of of two different coaching philosophies and cultures, if you will. Um, there's no other way to put it. We flip the switch. We beat that. We overcome that, and we start our, our first season two no since 2016. I think you can finally legitimately look at this thing and say, hey, we are finally going in the right direction. We've gaining momentum. How huge would be that for the program? So. I see a lot of debate on this, by the way, on Twitter. And I say, if we win that game, storm the field. Go for it. Just don't take down the goalposts, guys. Those things are expensive, and it's not like we want a natty. But if you want to storm the field, you want to have all the fans out on the field afterwards to celebrate, do it. Do it. We beat a heated rival we haven't beat in a long time. In a primetime game, and a first time starting 2-0 since 2016. And this is a 1997, boys. You know, I get it. If we were a dominant team, there would be no reason to storm the field. This ain't that, right? So I say do it. Just please leave the goalposts alone. They're expensive, apparently. Um, we've got a lot of big visitors coming in this weekend, guys. We've got a couple five stars, in Jude, including a, an offensive line in Kentwell. And Michael Terry, who you know, is going to be making a decision, I think, here soon, um, is coming in as well. Five-star talent. And they're hosting a whole bunch of other visitors, some that – 
of already committed to us, um, including quarterback TJ Latif and some who we're still trying to, to, to bring in. Guys, we're listed as 7.5 favorites, all right? Uh, I like it. Uh, I'm going to give a prediction at the end. I may take the under on that, but I like it, and I, I think that's, uh, you know, the last year I don't think we were favorites going into that game, nor should we have been, so that's good. All right, now let's dissect Colorado a little bit, guys. They barely beat North Dakota State. We all know that. I think that the whole world tuned into that game. I think most of the world was hoping they were going to get beat, but they didn't. They barely hung on just like that much, and they won there at the end. Here's the deal. you got to be careful on how you look at that game. North Dakota State is a, a Power 5 team slayer. I think they showed a graphic at the beginning of the game and said they've won of their last five meetings with Power 5 teams. They went 4-1 and one in them. Okay, so... Just slow our roll on, on criticizing them too hard on that, okay? But we, in order for us to beat Colorado, we're going to have to limit their explosive plays. So that's what kept them in it. They had nine plays of 15 yards or more. They threw touchdown passes of 41 yards and 69 yards, and they had two completions over 25 yards. That's what kept them in it. And you look at giant threats. Obviously, everyone talks about Travis Hunter. But you cannot forget about the speedster that is Jimmy Horn Jr., he has to be contained. And Tommy Hill can only be on one of them at a time, right? And they're both exceptional talents. Obviously, I expect Tommy Hill to heavily be on, on um, Travis Hunter. Who's covering, um, who's covering, who's fast enough to cover Jimmy Horn, right? I mean, so limiting the explosive plays, it's going to have to happen. All right, they're going to try to take their shots. I guarantee you Coach Prime is saying, hey, look, UTEP got one on them. UTEP didn't take a lot of shots, but the one they did, look at it. Right now, I think the reason you have to take a lot of shots is we adjusted after that. And although you can't see it on TV broadcast, I think the shot plays are probably taken away. But they're going to take them. They're going to take them, guys. Um, we've got to get the rush after them. We've got to be able to pressure them, move them around. And guess what? That's good. Because that so-called improved offensive line, it didn't look that improved. Now, he only got sacked once, okay, against an FCS opponent, a good one. But against an FCS opponent, he got sacked once. Um, they, if you watch that game, he was under duress every time he dropped back. And I like the odds of our D-line getting back there and wrecking havoc on him. So pressure him. Take the ball away on defense. It's going to have to happen. All right. Um, they didn't run the ball very well. And I don't think if they could do it against North Dakota you know, State, they're not going to do it against us. They average like 2.9 yards a carry or 2.5 something like that um and what i think is absolutely comical guys is after the game prime said coach prime says hey ideally we would like more balance he's asked about running the ball more versus throwing it this is a, a quote word for word mind you we would like to see a little more balance but what is balance balance is wins really that's what balance is Balance is wins, really. That's what balance is. No, I don't. I don't think. I don't think that. I don't think that's what balance is. Um, but okay, you, you could say, hey, we don't need balance to get wins, and wins is all that matters. I would buy that. But whatever he said there it just doesn't make any sense. Um, all right, but they were eleven of seven of eleven on third downs, so we have to stop those third downs. They were very efficient in in, in uh, staying alive, keeping their drives alive. Um, against them, North Dakota State had their own amount of uh, explosive plays. They gave up eight, or North Dakota State had eight explosive plays against them, right? And um, look at the weapons we have on offense. So this could be a high-scoring affair, guys. It could, easily. Um, we got to protect the ball. That's the biggest thing. Going back to running back by committee. Rule set all four of them are going to play again, including Dow Dow. You take that with what it's worth. I have my own opinions on it, and I love the guy um, because, to me, he looked like he could be RB1. But if you can't hold on to the ball, and the fact that he was fourth on the depth chart coming in, suggests to me, without having known this, just as purely speculative, that maybe he had trouble holding on the ball in, in practice, uh, that I don't know that we really want to, to have him in the game that much. But I don't know. That's the coach's decision. I trust Rule. If he sees it in practice and he says, I trust him, he's going to hold on to it now, he's our best running back. Give him the damn ball, right? Um, we rushed for 223 yards against UTEP. Run the damn ball against Colorado. Use the explosive plays when we need to. 
pressure them, take the ball away, limit the, the explosive plays. They're going to happen, guys. So if you're going into this and think that's going to be a 40-7 to 7 like UTEP, I, I would be shocked. It's not. It's going to be a close game. My prediction at the end of this thing, give me Nebraska. By the way, I'm always going to predict Nebraska. You're going to find that out. I'll never predict Nebraska to lose. I think that's just a culture and an attitude we all should have. Um, from fans to players to coaches. So I don't care if we play Georgia. I'm never going to predict this to lose. I think it's going to be close, uh, but I think this is the year we get it done. Give me Nebraska 31-28. Go Big Red.